Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Anybody going to rejoice with me, with our Father, and give him praise? Can we give him praise in the house today because of what he has done, what he's doing? Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm excited, and I'm here on purpose for God. Hallelujah. Can we put, can we, can we set our, our faces and on Jesus Christ this morning? Because he is doing something on your behalf. Matter of fact, he has already done something on your behalf. He died for us. Hallelujah. So we can be excited and we can give, we can, the Bible talks about giving a sacrifice of praise because of what he's already done. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we're going to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many going to be encouraged to wait on our Father? Hallelujah. You know, we can be so uh, in touch with different things in our life where we go to work. We make sure we get up and go to work. We make sure we take care of the things around our house. But when are we going to set our face like a flint and wait on the Lord? Because the God I serve, he's going to answer your prayer. He's going to answer your prayer. Matter of fact, he's answering it right now. It may be taking longer, but he's going to answer your prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. I am a witness. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I have waited patiently upon the Lord, and he heard my cry. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, be encouraged to wait. Whatever you're waiting for, whatever you're waiting for, God can do it. Hallelujah. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to hold you down. Doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now.
that get in your spirit. <laughs> Ooh, how much more does he love you? He dresses the lilies. That's flowers, y'all. He watches over every sparrow. Birds. So how much more does he love us? How much more does he love you? Thank you, Jesus. Don't worry about anything. God is a provider. God is a healer. <laughs> He's got you covered. <laughs> How much more does he love you? Woo! Glory, glory, glory. God, I thank you. <laughs> woo, woo. Mm. Woo. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's give God some praise. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> We are so blessed, y'all. Woo! We are so blessed. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. I want to welcome you to Redeeming Love Word Ministries. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning, whether you're here with us in person or if you are joining us by, um, by Facebook YouTube, whatever you may be joining us by, we are so grateful to have you with us this morning. We pray that you will join us each and every Sunday here at 10 o'clock, 740 North Main Street, as well as on Wednesdays, we have our Bible study at 720 p.m. We would love to have you come and join us. Thank you so very much for being here with this morning. We hope that you felt welcome when you entered in, and we pray that God will bless you from being with us on this morning. Thank you very much for being here. We are going to now ask Minister Douglas Hall to come and assist us with our offering. Thank you, praise team. Let's give God a praise as he comes with our offering. Thank you. Amen, amen. Well, it is offering time. It is offering time. And so at this time, I have the offer, opportunity to lead us in our worship and giving. So um, if you will go with me to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse, and we'll read in the King James Version. Amen. Not going to worry. <laughs> but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Next verse, please. When every man accorded 
as he purposed it in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? So popular scripture as it relates to the aspect of giving. And so a lot of times we hear the what, and God gives a command to do what. And he says to give, but not only give, but give cheerfully. If we can jump down to verse 10, because verse 10 here kind of explains the why. You know, a lot of times we are told what, and then there's some of us and ones that ask, well, why? Well, God's like, I got a why for you. So he says now, he that ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So here's the why behind the what he said to do. He said to do it and do it cheerfully, but here's why you do it. So that way it can multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, not just in your bank account, but your righteousness. We talk about the fruits of the spirit. He wants to expand your righteousness. Amen. Next verse, please. And being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes God or causes through us thanksgiving to God. Next verse. And for the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So this work that we're doing is not unto us, but this is a outward expression of our thanksgiving to God. Amen. So as you uh, govern yourselves to give, we're not asking you to give all, but we are asking all to give. Amen. All to give. Amen. And so how can you give? We have a few ways here. Got a few ways you can do it here. You can get, uh, give online at hisredeeminglove.com or you can download the Church by Ministry One app. You can also text to give. Then you also, if it's just sitting on you and you just got to get it out of your hands and you want to do it live, you can do so here um, by the facilitation of Deacon James Martin. So at this time, let us come forward with our giving. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the seed that we have. We're asking that you bless this seed, that you will multiply it for the glory of your name, Father, that your great work can be done in the earth that would indeed give others glory and honor and praise that is due your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please come, if you will. That's why I come and give cheerfully. That's why God loves a cheerful gift. Dressing the lilies of the field, sparrows have nothing to worry about. How much more? At this time now, I will hand this over to uh, Sister Deaconess Martin. She, Sister Deaconess, as she comes <laughs> and move us along in service on this morning. Amen. Thank you, Minister Hall. I am excited because this is our last Sunday of Youth Month, but I'm a little sad, too, because I've been in, I don't know about you, but I've really been enjoying the youth sharing with us. So I'm... Give it up. Yeah, give it up for all of our youth that had shared with us so far. They've been wonderful. Youth, you have been doing an amazing job. So this Sunday, I have the pleasure of having Miss Noelle Martin is going to give us our announcements for the morning. Please give her a hand as she comes. Good morning, Redeeming Love Word Ministries. Good morning. My name is Noelle Martin, and I am here with your morning announcement. The singles department will be hosting a game night on August 30th from 7 to 10 p.m. This, this event is free and open to the public. Food will be provided. RSVP with Charisma today. Mark, uh, mark your calendars for September 4th 
our Wednesday evening service will be held um, at New Covenant Christian Center. We are traveling to support our leaders. The address is 1305 Ball Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. Join us for our annual Love Life Prayer Walk. <laughs> Taking place on Saturday, September 21st at 9 a.m. Please see the flyer for additional details. Singles, our first single conference is September 27th through the 28th. You do not want to miss this. Invite your friends and loved ones for a time of connection, impartation, and fun. Reg register by scanning the QR code on the flyer. See time and harvest. <laughs> we are excited to celebrate our annual See Time and Harvest service on September 29th during our 10 a.m. service. Ladies, our book club is back. Join us as we read and growth in health, wealth, and wisdom. Our first book is our first. Our first book will be "I'll Start Again Monday" by Lisa Turkis. So grab a copy today. Our first, uh, our first in-person discussion will be Friday, September six. Connect Aisha Hall or Angela copy a Angela. Um, Campbell for more information. Good job. October is our breast month, breast cancer awareness month. Amen. We will be hosting a 5K walk in support of our survivors. The cost is only $10 and will take place on Saturday, October 5th at 9 a.m. Join us for our Pink Out Sunday. On October 6th, with Elder Sa Sandy Flock from Kingdom Impact Global Ministries in Fedville, North Carolina. Amen. And we have a guest this morning, and it is Kashad Dickens. Now we will proceed with our next Youth Month segment. Great job. Thank you so much, Noel. Thank you very much. All right, so we are going to proceed with our next segment of Youth Month, and we are going to have our Kingdom Kids Ministry. All right, this morning I am going to have... Two wonderful young ladies that are going to join me. And then, guess what? I have a treat for you guys. We are going to have a special guest this morning that is going to do a special talent for our youth. So, get ready. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. All right, so this morning on the Kingdom Kids Network, we will have Miss Zenobia join us. Come on down. And I will also have Miss Yasmina, who will be joining me this morning. All right, so we have been, of course, discussing with our youth increase and we have been discussing that in our local church as well and so I thought the past three Sundays the youth have done an awesome job sharing with us about increase so these ladies wanted to share with you a little bit about what they know about increase so Zenobia what does increase mean to you with Jesus all things are possible she says, with Jesus, all things are possible. Awesome. Yasmina, what does increase mean to you? To help people that want to be closer to God. 
Help people that want to be, wow, closer to God. All right. Zenobia, what have you learned about increase? What do you think you've learned about it? It's okay. Would you like Yasmina to go first and then come back to you? Okay. Yasmina, can you share with us what you've learned about increase? If you stay in the path God wants you to stay on, there is zero increase. Wow, that was awesome. Stay on the path that God wants you to be on. Awesome. All right. Zenobia, you ready? What have you learned about increase? I learned that only Jesus can increase me, not that nobody else can. Amen. Glory. Only God can do it. Yes. Come on. And then my last question for you ladies, how have you seen God increase in your life? How has he shown increase in your life? By making me smarter and getting better grades in school. Amen. Amen. Yes, Mina, how have you seen God show increase in your life? By bettering me and my mom. Amen. That's so important. Amen. Wonderful job. So you can see that these ladies know about increase, can share about increase, and have truly learned lots about increase. And we want to give them another round of applause for sharing with us this morning. They did a wonderful job. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. God's trying to tell us something. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you again for joining the Kingdom Kids Network this morning. And we want to leave you with a blessing. We pray that God will continue to increase you more and more, you and your children. Thank you, Jesus. I'll now turn it over to our wonderful pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. God's trying to tell us something, amen? Thank God for our special guest from all the way from High Point. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a demonstration, Lord, from our young people. Lord, I thank you for this month. Thank you for the talents and the gifts that have been on display Thank you, Lord, that our children are hearing and obeying your word. Lord, may you indeed increase us more and more, we and our children. I pray, Father, that we would be even as the children are, as they have been open and innocent, Lord, concerning the things of the kingdom. Cause us to be receptive as well as adults. Lord, they are a model of the behavior you desire us to have concerning coming into the kingdom. Lord, we thank you for these things, and we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Well, now that you all are seated and comfortable, I want to move my young people up. This is my last Sunday with them. So I'm going to ask all of my young people to move up forward. I would say young at heart because then some of y'all think y'all could be up here. Yeah, yeah, no, no, y'all can stay there. Y'all can stay there. Y'all can stay there. Y'all can stay there. Y'all young at heart. Hallelujah. Y'all young at heart. Yep, right there is good. If we need the first and second rows, that's fine. I just, I want to be able to see y'all. I want to make eye contact. See, the rest of them folks, they know, they, they know they're not young at heart back there. See, that's what that is. 
Amen. Y'all don't feel no pressure sitting up here, do you? <laughs> Amen. Could be worse. It could be standing up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, now that we have shuffled everybody around, we'll go ahead and get started on this morning. This morning, I want to speak to you from the topic. Well, before I tell you the topic, um, many of us have been, throughout the course of our lives, the interesting thing about being an adult is we were once children. The funny thing about that is most of our kids don't believe that we was once children. <laughs> now, I know y'all saying, well, I believe my parents was once. No, no, we don't because some of the very things that we try to do to get over, we did it already. <laughs> my mama used to have a saying that she would say to me, she says, I've been where you're trying to go. <laughs> that kind of put it all in perspective. Where I'm trying to get to, she's already been there. So just know that your parents have been where you're trying to get to. Amen. So this morning, I want to speak to you from the topic. It will make sense later on. Amen. We're not going to be long, but we're going to be direct. It will make sense later on. In John chapter 13 and verse 7, it's a passage of scripture that had the Lord was speaking to me early on in my salvation process. And he kept saying it to me. And I was praying and seeking God and I'm, he kept saying it to me. And it reads, Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. So that's what I want to talk about with our young people today. It will make sense later on. Because yes, if you don't understand what your parents are doing now, you, you know, I remember taking trigonometry. <laughs> oh, look at that. See that? Y'all remember taking trigonometry? I mean, you, you know, we, we were good. We was like... Okay, you know, I, I got past that algebra. I'm, I'm good. You know, algebra was, was, algebra was different math because algebra is your first experience where you go from numbers and letters. You know, if, if, if you was like me, I, I had a certain way of thinking, so I'm like, math is numbers. Then algebra introduced letters. And I'm like, what, what is this? So then you get the trig, and it's like a whole nother beast. Then when I remember when I got in college, it was calculus. And I call it the black monster because it was a black book. <laughs> and it was a monster. Amen. And I know you're saying, well, Pastor, why are we talking about algebra? Why are we talking about trigonometry? Why are we talking about calculus? Well, because at that time, none of those made sense to me. Why am I going to need algebra when I get out of school? Why am I going to need trigonometry? And I'm still wondering that when I get out of school, why I'm going to need calculus, so on and so forth. So it didn't make sense to me then. But there would be times, Elder Campbell, in my life where I would come up on something and I declare it looked like an algebra problem. <laughs> and all of a sudden it made sense to why I took that class. Sometimes I might find myself, maybe I was working on something or, or trying to build something or whatever, and I need a, I, that, that protractor that I used to have to have in class. I said, boy, it'd be nice to have that right now. The little things like that that just kind of came back to you because it made sense later on. Didn't make sense then, it made sense later on. So I want to talk to you about it will make sense later on. Now, we're not going to be here long. I want you to go with me to Mark chapter 10. New Living Translation, verse 13. It will make sense later on. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. 
The Bible says one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. Our desire as parents, I'm going to just give y'all a scoop. See, we, we didn't, most of us as parents, we didn't have this scoop that we're giving y'all today. We, we didn't have it. I, I mean, can, can I just be honest? Sometimes I was getting beaten and I didn't know why. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I know you said, well, you've done something. No, it was, I'm like, this, this, this got to be something behind this. It didn't make sense then. <laughs> Just say, you know, I got to get a whooping for what? I mean, can't, can't we just discuss this? I mean, you, let's be honest, there are some people now that feel like, you know, you, you, you got a two-year-old, y'all should sit down and have a diplomatic resolution to whatever the problem is. There are some people who feel that way. So consequently, Victoria, when they make it to your class, they ain't ever been disciplined. They used to just sit Johnny in the corner. You, you get time out. When we grew up, time out was in football. Time out was in basketball. Time out was not in the whooping. Because the whooping was coming. But it didn't make sense to me then. Elder Campbell, did, did, I didn't understand that the whooping was part of discipline, which is what you're going to need later on in life. That, that the whooping was actually, now I know it might be some people walking, they're going, whooping, you got a whooping? Yeah, it might be some stuff. Now that they might say it was child abuse, I don't know. But you know what? I look at the way our society is now. And it's because children didn't learn it was necessary to have boundaries. See, the discipline was to let us know about boundaries. That you can't do what you want in life and just run over other people and other people's stuff and just, just be abusive to other people and get away with that. So it helped discipline us. You know, back then, my mom used to say, you know, well, my grandparents actually, you know, that was part of like, so you don't go to jail. Right. 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 See, see, then, then they, they knew me. They knew I had an appetite, so they would say, in jail, they only feed you bread and water. <laughs> so they knew I didn't want to go to jail because the brother had to do better than bread and water. So that's what they told me. But it was because, see, you needed the discipline in your life. Not to learn, to get away with everything, to get off with everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He just brought back something to my remembrance. So, so. My point is, <clears throat> Mark chapter 10, verse 13, one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them, but the disciples scolded the parents who bothered him. See, our desire as parents is to get you to Jesus. Amen. Oh, this is what we really want. <clears throat> when we take your phone, it's really to get you to Jesus. I know it don't make sense right now. But it's really to get you to Jesus. When we say you can't go stay over such and such house, it's because we want to get you to Jesus. Yes. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Cause, see, because right now it don't make sense to y'all. But it makes sense later on. When we say, listen, you can't do that, but you see everybody else doing that. And then that, that phenomenal question comes up, why? It's to get you to Jesus. That's what's all behind this is we're trying to get you to Jesus. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. See, we're trying to train you. We're doing our very best to train you. And see, sometimes when we're training you, you don't realize you're being trained, so you're going like, this don't make sense. Let, 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 let me take a moment here. Okay. I want y'all, young people that are in here for a moment, I want you to act like your parents are not here for a moment, okay? This is just us. Just us, okay? Now, 
I'm going to ask you a question. I just want you to raise your hand. Okay? How many of you all, your parents have ever done something in your life and you said, this don't make sense? <laughs> okay. I'm just making sure we got it. All right, y'all can put them down now. I'm just making sure we got the right topic, you know? Just making sure we got the right topic. Okay. Look, look like we all can identify here. Oh, okay, okay, Kyle, you can put it down now. <laughs> You good, baby. We, you good. You good. You good. We got you. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Let me tell you something about adults. The Bible says, go back to, to verse 13 in Mark chapter 10. Look, watch this. It says, the parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. See, we're trying to get you to Jesus. That's the goal. But watch this. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. Let me tell you something. Don't despise what you don't understand. Right. Don't despise what you don't understand. What do you mean? Don't hate on it just because you don't understand it. Listen, I am the first to agree with you. Some things don't make sense right now. But we can't wait till it makes sense to you before we do it. Because remember, we're trying to train you. I've never seen anybody decide that they're going to train on the day of the event. You know you won't even qualify to get to the event. So you got to train beforehand. Look at verse 14. The Bible says, when Jesus saw what was happening, now the disciples are scolding the parents. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. So the disciples are scolding the parents who are trying to get their children to Jesus. Let me share something with you. Adults don't always get it. We're not perfect. I know it blows your mind. My mama ain't perfect. My daddy ain't perfect. No, we're not. We blow it. We make mistakes. We don't always get it right. But remember, we're trying to get you to Jesus. Remember what I said first? We're trying to get you to Jesus. That's our goal. So sure, it may not always make sense to you. And sure, sometimes we may actually... Blow it. But we're still trying to get you to Jesus. The goal, Jordan, is to get you to Jesus. Even if we blow it, we're trying to get you there. We want to make sure we understand. Come on. Now, look at this. <clears throat> when Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. It is Jesus' desire for you to come to him. Listen to me, young people. In the course of your life, people are going to reject you. There's going to be some crowds you want to be in that's going to say, no, I don't want you. There's going to be some people who are going to actually not want you around. I know you're lovely. I know you're great. And you go like, why would they ever do that to me? It's going to happen. But I want you to know Jesus wants you around. He desires you to come to him. He said, let the children come to me. So if somebody else don't want you in their group, know that Jesus wants you in his. And look at this. Jesus says, don't stop them. He actually spoke to the people who were following him, to the people who were supposed to be in tune with him, and said, listen, stop doing what you're doing. Don't stop the children from coming to me. So what are you saying, Pastor? Very simple. Don't let anything or anybody in this life stop you from coming to Jesus. Don't let anything or anybody in this life stop you from coming to Jesus. Jesus desires you to come to him. Your parents are working to get you to him. So don't let anything or anybody in this life 
stop you from coming to him. Told you we're going to be short, but we're going to be direct. Verse 15. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. See, the innocent approach to the kingdom of God is the model for how we should receive from God. You all are sitting here today with an incredible amount of faith. If God says it, you believe it. You're not considering conditions. You're not worrying about what happened to Aunt Susie. You're not worrying about, well, what if this? You, you don't even do that. That's something that happens to us later on in life, yes. unfortunately. But you're at a point where you can simply accept, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. It's the innocency of childhood. Keep that. Never lose that. You don't have to grow out of that. You can hold on to that. The Bible says, <clears throat> and I'm about finished. I told you it's going to be short, but it's going to be direct. The Bible says, then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. So, May we just for a moment watch this story unfold. There are a group of parents who are ushering their children. They want Jesus to take them and touch them and bless them. While they're coming forward, there's a group of disciples who see what is transpiring, and they decide to scold or Stop them from getting their children to Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus beholds what's happening. He's looking and he said, wait, wait a minute. No, y'all stop what y'all doing. Don't stop the children from getting to me. That's what I want. So after the disciples have been rebuked, corrected, and straightened out, they begin to allow the parents to get the children to Jesus. So the Bible says, then Jesus takes the children in his arms and his hands, and he blesses them. So Jesus put his hands on some children and blessed them. Let, let me share something with you. I want you to keep that thought. I have heard stories of children who met famous athletes or celebrities, and they were inspired by that meeting. They met so-and-so. I was watching the other day this little boy standing on the outside of the uh, uh, tunnel, and Steph Curry was coming out. And the little boy is standing there, and you, you know they have all of the entourage and the, 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 the guards, and they, you, know, you can't just rush in there. And the little boy says, Steph, Steph. Steph Curry saw him. He said, hey. The little boy is just like, he froze. And his dad says, can he get an autograph? And he said, come on. All of a sudden, the Red Sea of people parted. <clears throat> and they let this one little boy run in there. And he ran in there. And Steph, he, said, he, was, just, he was just standing there. I just wanted to meet him. Meet him. And his dad said, you going to get an autograph? I mean, like, you here now, you going to get an autograph? So he handed him a marker. And of course, he didn't have anything except the jersey that he was wearing. So turned around, and Steph wrote on the back of his jersey, signed his name. I mean, what a moment. I've seen stories of athletes who met other athletes when they were young, and now they themselves are stars. If you didn't know, if you didn't watch the Olympics, and you've seen... KD, Kevin Durant, for the rest of y'all, you know, <laughs> for the rest of y'all. Kevin Durant is on, was, on, was on the uh, Olympic team. But there's Anthony Edwards, who's on the Olymp Olympic team, who's a star in his own right. But his, for lack of a better word, well, the person he looked up to, I'm not going to use that other word. That's up, that's up. The person he looked up to when he was young was Kevin Durant. 
And if you would notice any time they're on the bench, any time there's a, a break or a huddle, Anthony Edwards is right next to Kevin Durant because this is the person he looked up to when he was a young boy. So imagine the impact of seeing your hero and now you playing with your hero. Imagine the interaction that you had with them when, when you were young and they inspired you to grow and to develop into who you are. So let's go back to our story because right now, there's some children in the arms of Jesus. There's some children with Jesus laying his hands on them. There's some children with Jesus speaking over them. What are they going to grow up to do? What are they going to grow up to be? They weren't blessed by somebody. They were blessed by Jesus. I wonder what those children that were held in Jesus' arms and blessed by him went on to do in the kingdom. Who did they become? What was their impact? The same one that other people tried to stop them from getting to Jesus. The same ones, can, can, can I just for a moment? Mama, why, why, why are you bringing me to this, to this meeting? Why, why I got to go up there? Why I got to sit on the front row? <laughs> Not knowing what it was going to mean later on. Because they were young then and didn't realize or it didn't make sense then until later on. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait, we, we, we almost about to close, about to close. My mother told me a story. And I want to share this story with you and I'm going to give you a scripture and we're going to close out. My mom would probably be watching this, so <laughs> she had to figure out why. I called her again yesterday to just get some updates, so because the story came back to me in preparation for this. My mom told me a story about five years ago, four or five years ago. She said, and I don't know what conversation we were, and we were just talking. And it seems like whenever I get around my mom and we, we get some real time, it ain't that I ask questions, it's just conversation come out. And you start learning things that you never knew, things that you didn't necessarily know to ask questions about. And we were talking, and she says, yeah, um, when you were young, this preacher prayed for you. Yeah, I've done the same thing. What? Because I didn't even know. I had no inkling, no idea. And I was talking with her on yesterday, and she was saying it was a dedication service. She said that she literally brought me to the service, but she didn't necessarily know what was going on. But they were praying to bless the children and praying for guidance for the children. Deacon Green, I had no inkling, no idea. I wasn't feeling one way or the other. But she was bringing me to Jesus. Not knowing it would make sense later on. Let me close with this. I didn't understand it then, but now later on I do. Jeremiah 29 and 11, New Living Translation. For I know, see God knows, even when we don't know, even when the parents don't know. For I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for each and every one of you. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. God's plan for you is for good. I know it may not always feel good, but it's for good. If you allow his plan to work in your life, it is for good. It is not necessarily for your good because then we start deciding what good is for us. 
It is for good and not for disaster. God is not trying to punish you. God is not trying to beat you down. God is not trying to destroy you. He is trying to make sure you get his plan because his plan is for good. His plan will give you a future. No, a real future. Believe it or not, apart from God, there is no future. He's trying to give you a future and a hope. You will find, and I'm closing, young people, you will find your friends caught up into so many different things. What they wear, what they will eventually drive, all of these kinds of things, it's because they're empty on the inside. They have made their value and their self-worth into things. And if they don't have those things, they don't feel like they have any value. It's because they've not experienced God's plan for their life. They've not come to know that that plan is for good and not disaster, that they can have a hope and a future in God. I'm telling you what I know. It may, it may not make sense right now, but it will later on. You will see adults in life that are caught up in what zip codes they live in, what cars they drive, and what they wear. It's because they don't realize that God has a plan for their life. And so since they don't realize that, the only thing that they know that they can get identity in is in the things that are around them. And it is sad because they're really shallow people. But you don't have to be like that. Every head bow and eyes are closed. God has a plan for good for you and not for disaster. He wants to give you a future and a hope. If you're here today, whether you're young or young at heart, God still has a plan. It's his plan. Not yours, but his. His plan involves you receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is not a bless me plan. This is a redemption plan. And in redemption, you find the blessings of God. There's so many people who are looking to get things and they're not looking to get God. No man cometh to the Father but by the Son. You've got to come through Jesus. There's no other way. That's why if you notice in our story today, the parents were bringing him, bringing the children to Jesus. There's no other way to this plan of salvation but through Jesus. He's the only one who died for each and every one of us. Jesus himself was buried. And he rose again on the third day from the grave. This same Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. Today, if you're here and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're ready to experience God's plan. Not your plan. Not the one that you've been working on. You see what else don't got you. But God's plan. You ready to surrender. While every head is bowed, eyes are closed. I want to ask you, this was your last day on the planet. Whose plan are you closing your eyes with? Is it your plan or is it God's plan? If it's your plan, here's an opportunity to change plans right now. If you're here, and you want to, first, you want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And secondly, maybe you're looking to, you said, listen, I want to rededicate my life. I realize I've gotten off track. I'm not walking with God, with his plan, I strayed somewhere. And I want to come back. It's not too late. You're still breathing. It's not too late. 
This is a wonderful moment to get back on track. If you're here and you meet either of those criteria and you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried, and he rose again on the third day, I just want you to raise your hand. That's me. That's me. I see that hand. I see that hand. Amen. I see that hand. See, this is what it's really all about. It's the plan of God for your life. It's the plan of God for your life. Lord, I don't understand it. Doesn't always make sense, but later on it will. Because the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. See, later on, it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense the decision you made to surrender your life to Christ. It's going to make sense when you begin to realize this was God's plan all along. Look how he's blessed my life. Listen, if you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you simply to, to stand to your feet. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. See, we're standing acknowledging, Lord, I'm surrendering. We're standing acknowledging an absolute surrender of my life. Not trying to hold on to it. Lord, here it is. I'm standing for Jesus. To those that are standing today, we're going to pray. It's amazing how God can deal with the hearts when we simply allow him to speak. When Kendall was ministering, he said, the Lord is speaking, and he is. But do, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but later on, it will. I want those that are standing to pray with me. The rest of you all are free to, if you would like to as well. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I completely and totally surrender my life to you. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried, and you rose again on the third day. Satan, I renounce you and all my allegiances to anything that belongs to you. I give myself completely to Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated.